me while I was shut away in prayer this afternoon. I've been shut away most of the day. And God spoke to me this afternoon and he said, uh, I, 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 I hope that you can get a hold of this. But he said, this is not revival. Ooh, come on. Amen. Come on. I said, Lord, what do you mean this is not revival? He said, revival is something that comes and stirs. Yes. Amen. And just as it comes and stirs, it can be unstirred. You know, if you stir a pot and then you, you leave that pot alone for a, a minute, then it, then you got to go back up around and stir it again. But God said, this is just not revival. This is an awakening. This is a spiritual awakening. Your name. That's right. 
That's right. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand. Hath he hit me. And he made me a polished shaft. Yes. And in his quiver, yes. he hit me. Come on. Yes. Preach. I'm going to give you some really important information tonight. Amen. He made me a polished shaft. And after he got done making me, he put me in the quiver. Yes. Oh, we do. Do it. When the twig is 
removed from its life source. And then it gets stripped. The next thing that happens to it is it is put in a screw-like device okay. to make it straight. Ooh, I don't know if y'all are out in the woods hunting somewhere or if I got your attention. <laughs> it's put in a, in a device that will, with clamps yeah. that screws it down, and it's a long process. Yes, yes. Oh. It's a long process, but it, 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 don't, it, don't just, it don't just get straightened out overnight. Right, right, right. It doesn't just change its formation overnight. Right. It's a long process. And after it gets straight, the next thing that happens is it's is put in oil. You like Bina? Ooh, he took way too long to answer. <laughs> it's put in oil and it's soaked in oil. And that soaking takes a long, long time. Yeah. And after it's soaked for a while, then it gets polished. And the reason why it gets polished is because of the polishing of the shaft. Come on, stay online with me. Yeah. It's very important because it will help to govern how fast, how far. Yes. Yes. Come on. Good. With what kind of power that arrow is going to go. Yes. Yes. If it's polished, it will it will help. Listen, if this thing is warped. It's not a whole lot of good. That's right. Because no matter how many pounds of pull you got on that bow, if this is warped, it's going to be ineffective. Y'all ain't saying a word to me tonight. Everything has to come into alignment in order for your ministry, for your life, for your Yes. That's why you're in dry desert. 
places tonight. God's trying to dry you out. Come on. Come on. He's trying to make you usable. He allows you to go into those wilderness places where you feel like you're cut off from your very life source because you've got to die to the things of the flesh. On you've got to die to you. You've got to die to you that he become alive. Ministry 
That deserves an amen. <laughs> but they don't have the integrity to operate the ministry that God has given to them. They have no direction. They have no fleshy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He has made you a polished chef. Yeah. 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 You ain't going to hear this is the first church of the buzzards. Come on. Amen. <laughs> I made that up too. Amen. In order for this to be effective, it has to go through the process. Yes. You saw on board with me tonight? Yes. Amen. He's made you a polished shaft. You need the shaft, which is indicative of your ministry. Or what? Everybody has a ministry. Yes. 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 Come on. I remember one time I was asking a church in West Texas and um, had a whole church full of people that, that wanted to preach. That's admirable. Someone called to preach and you can't get them to do nothing. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, Lord. Come on. I'm about to get myself in trouble. <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying, Pastor? And, 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 and these people, they, they, they all were, were, were wanting to know their ministry. Sister Sherry, can you just tell me what my ministry? Uh -oh. If I just knew what my ministry is, I'd be glad to get in my ministry. If I just knew what my ministry was. Yeah. Yeah. So I called special meeting, brother Bruce. Called special meeting. They all come in. I said, I'm going to prophesy to everybody here tonight about your ministry. And I'm going to tell each one of you what your ministry is. But on my way to church, I stopped at the Dollar Tree. And I got me a whole bunch of toilet bowl brushes. And I said, here's your scepter. You want to know what your ministry is? You just be taking the queen of the toilet. You take your scepter and get to work. Amen. Every one of us has a ministry. Every one of us has a call on our lives. Did the word not say that from the womb of your mother, he knew who you were, he knows who you are, and he's called you by name, but he's taking you, and he's making you a polished shaft, so that the ministry, oh you all are not saying nothing, so that the ministry that he's called you to can be an effective ministry. So you got your ministry. You've been stripped. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. I know I'm going to make somebody mad, but we'll open up the altar and let you pray through. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell you something. God is tired of people embarrassing him. Amen. Yeah. And they go over to this one and say it again. I want to make sure you catch it. Yeah. I say, God is tired of people embarrassing him and making a mockery of who he is. You've got to have some integrity to operate your ministry. You've got to have some direction. You've got to have some guidance. You've got to have, amen, some destiny in place to know where God is taking you. You see, God already knows the thoughts. He already knows the plans.
piece yes. of twig. He'll cut it from its life source. Am I doing all right, Coffin? Yes. He'll strip it. Yeah. He'll put it down in that screw-like device. Let me tell you what that is. That's the Holy Ghost. Yes. 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 That's the Holy Ghost working on your kid. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. But how can I can't get nobody to help me? You even went south. Amen. Well, he's acting like he's listening. Amen. You have to be, you have to go through the process in order to get to where you can be effective. Right. Have you ever run across anybody that does not want to darken the doors of a church? Oh, yeah. Not just your church. All right. All right. All right. Have you run across anybody that you have maybe witnessed to and they said, I don't do church, I don't do church. Ha, ha, ha. Me and me and T D, we got we got our own thing going. I, got, yeah. I watch T D every Sunday afternoon. He go on three o'clock to five o'clock. Okay. But there's something about the assembly of the saints together. Yeah, yeah. Come on, they get you in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. But there's also the second verse to that song. Is that we have some of us made mockery? Yes. I gotta tell y'all a story. Me and Sister Margie, y'all know who Mrs. Sister Margie does. We was in the store the other day, and uh, a lady come in that store, and I mean, I think she just got out of the Navy. You was a Marine, right? Uh, oh, 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 you was middle of the road. Okay, you was one of the uniform, but whatever. I, I mean, she was using language. And then she said, I'm tell y'all what. She had half people with her. Say, I'm going to tell y'all what. I'm going to be in somebody's church Sunday morning. I said, Sister, don't wait till Sunday morning. <laughs> you ain't got to wait till Sunday morning. We can help you now. I mean, she said, she said, I just turned 60 years old. I said, bless your little scrubby heart. You want Linda to be 61? Uh -oh. <laughs> you better put that mess. Right. She said, I just turned 60 years old. Said, and I thank my God that he let me live this long. I'm going to tell you what, them oh, did, 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 the inexplicable, those things that you can't repeat. And she was going on and going on and going on. And I'm going to tell you something. If she could have been a testimony to anybody, yes. she just wrecked it. Because yes. her character yeah. looked yeah. like she just come up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Great. Come on. Great. Her witness was no good. That's right. Amen. 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 I was hoping y'all would like me, but it's all right because I'm going to preach this because God gave it to you. Right. You have to have those things in place in order for you to be effective in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You can shoot a crooked arrow and they're going to tell them what it'll hit. You can shoot, you can shoot one of them twigs that ain't got no arrowhead on it. Yeah. It's gonna go so far and it's gonna pop. Right. Yeah. Right? Come on. You can take one of those things, Sister Kayla, that ain't got no fletching on it, and when you pull back that bow, I ain't never shot a bow in my life. Well, I tried to once they made me do it at school and I didn't do too good. But uh, I'll end with that. But if it ain't got no fletching, it has no direction. No, right. That's right.
But if you've got character on the end of your damage. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I wish y'all could see this like I do. Yes. Sister Kayla, when you've got integrity, when you've got character on the end of that ministry, when you've got a reputation on the end of that common share, yeah. you can get something done. Yeah. Even if it appears to be damaged, yeah. God can take that damaged yeah. shack yeah. and he can turn it for something valuable. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. I know this is not a popular message. I don't know if I've ever heard it preached before or not. My friend in Southern Illinois told me that uh, there's nothing, anything that we say or whatever. Uh, I can't remember how he said it. But anyway, it's, we've heard it somewhere. So there's a possibility I've heard this somewhere and it clicked in my spirit. And so now you're going to hear it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because I want you to be the best that you can be. Yeah. I don't want you to go through all of that being cut off. Yeah. I don't want you to go through all of that dying out. Yes. Yes. I want you to go through all of that stripping. You see, you right. wonder why have I been stripped of everything? Everybody's walked out and left me. Yes. I ain't got a friend right. nowhere. I ain't got nothing left but the clothes on my back. Yes. I got a jar of peanut butter and I'm living in this car. Uh -oh. Come on. Yes. Man, God, I ain't got nothing left. Everything has been stripped. Why? Is all this going on yeah. in my life? Because God is going to use every one of those situations, every one of those right. circumstances yeah. to cause you to become effective yeah. in His yeah. kingdom. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the twig is put in a screw-like device, which would be your Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you... Get those, uh, I'll, I'll say this for the sake of the people that are, are not walking where some of the rest of you are walking. Uh, when you get that gut feeling, yes. and something inside you is like, uh, you are to not be here. <laughs> something inside you, Brother Reed saying, eh, she ain't the one. <laughs> Yes. 
All the stuff that you, Sister Kelly, get moved on. And then, your character, your integrity yes. is added right. to the end of that shaft. Yes. Added to the end of that polished shaft. Yes. And then, the fletching gets put on. <coughs> that shows you, y'all ain't going to work at all. That shows you your direction or which yes. way you're going to go. Listen, and then you got to line up. Come on, yeah. You've got to line up with the word of God. You can put fletching on this arrow. Come on. It's not in my homework. Amen. Yeah. You can put fletching on this arrow. But before they put the fletching on, you know what they gotta do? They wipe up with alcohol. Yeah. Because the glue, oops, I ripped it. Uh, the glue, I told you it was damaged. Yeah. You've been through 
through car wrecks. You've been a candidate for the 13th floor of the nearest hospital. <laughs> you had the police at your door. Did you know your son did this and this and this? Did you know that your son is in my jail right now? You've been through all of that. I would hate to think, woman of God, that you've been through all of that and have not developed any character. Come on. Amen. I would hate to think that after all you've been through, Amen. you don't have any validity yes. Yes. in the kingdom of God. What place are you in tonight? Are you in the place of being broken? Are you in the place of being cut away from your life source? Because I'm going to tell you something. All those things that you thought you couldn't live without. My friend called me yesterday and he said, have you found that thing that you just can't live without? I said, you know what I have not. Jesus is the only thing I know of that I can live without. Because I know I can live without some people. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't want to live without food. But I, and I can't live without water. But I found out there's a whole lot of things I can't live without. That's right. And some of you that do not want to get on board with the move of God, you're going to find out that the move is going to go on anyway. Yeah. Because you got a pastor right here. You got a pastor right here. You got a pastor right back right there. And you're going to make sure that the move of God goes on. And if you want to get on board, then you don't feel a little happy self. And if you know, amen, this ship's going to sail anyway. Yeah. 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 What stage are you at? Are you at the stage of being broken? Are you at the stage of being separated from your roots? Brother Dan's my cousin. He came to Mississippi and had to make new roots. Because his roots are in my cornfield. Yeah. But he found some woman. <laughs> I love you, baby. I love you. <laughs> she knows I do. But he found his wife, or she found him. No, he found her because he let find the wife find the good thing in a paper. That's right. So That's he right. found her. And when he found her, he had to be disrooted yes. from his right. roots. That's right. Oh, yeah. Come on, preach on my tongue. They just won't get it. They just won't get it. You can see that I said that. That's how it is. Amen. Uprooted from your comfortable position. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What place are you in tonight? Yes. Are you in the, 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 the place of being broken? Are you in the place of being uprooted? Are you in the place of being stripped? Come on. Ooh. Are you in the place of being straightened out? Wow. Are you in the soaking? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Ooh. Has your character been developed? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Is your fletching on right? Yeah. Come on, Jesus. Wow. I think I think for the pastor there's a scripture that said he would he would cover you with his feather. Is there a scripture that says that? Yes. I believe there is. Yeah. Yes, it is. So if, if, if thank you. I, I, I was pretty sure it said that. So if he will cover you with it, it's there. Psalm 91, yeah, he'll cover you with his feather, right? Amen. And so if fletching is made from feathers.
don't get one chance. So let me tell you this tonight, that while you feel as though you've been hidden away and nobody recognizes your talent, nobody recognizes your ministry, nobody recognizes your anointing, understand this, that God has had you put in his quiver. He's going to pull you 
life equivalent. The whole world is going to see. The whole world is going to see. There's a world around you, my friend, amen, that needs God desperately. Oh, yes, Jesus help. yes, yes. There are family members that have fought you, that have come against you, that have not understood you. Look at you, can, you, you can serve your God, but you ain't got to cut up like that. You ain't got to act like that. Just, just sit on there and be quiet. You ain't got to, you ain't got to, you ain't got to get all wound up like that. Amen. I do. You know why I do? Because I can. Because there was a time I couldn't. Come on. There was a time I was I, 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 I was under man's doctrines that wouldn't afford me. Amen. That wouldn't afford me to, to, to stand in front of a congregation of people and minister the word of God. So right. there was a time that I was in a, in, in a, in, in a doctrine that, that wouldn't allow me to do certain things because I didn't meet their criteria. But let me help you out, darling. How many he set me free? Come on.
He wants to remind you that your steps are ordered of the Lord. And what you have been going through physically with your feet, you didn't tell me this, correct? What you've been physically going through with your feet is not actually a physical condition. It's a spiritual thing that the enemy is coming against you to try to get you to stumble, to try to get you off the path, to try to detour your walk, to get you to go a different direction. It's a spiritual thing. And so I want you to do this when you get home. I want you to get some oil, and some anointing oil, and I want you to anoint both feet, your ankles, amen, because your ankles are special. Uh, I feel like God is saying that they're a little bit on the weak side. And God said to tell you that when you anoint your ankles and you anoint your feet, that the enemy that has attacked your walk, he has attacked your walk. And he's trying to make it, uh, uh, he's trying to make it uh, uh, manifested in the physical. That's all he can do. He can go no farther. But we're going to put a stop to it tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the manifestation in the physical, amen, I pronounce the benediction on it. Amen. The manifestation in the physical, and it will also be the benediction of the manifestation in the spiritual because you're going to walk the walk. You're going to talk the talk. You're going to lead the way. Hallelujah. Because there's some people that are looking at you, and they're waiting for you to fall. They're hoping you fall. They're expecting you to fall. But guess what, woman of God? You ain't falling because you're walking straight down. And he's ordering your steps. Ordering your steps. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anoint your feet, darling. Anoint your feet. Anoint your feet. Shake it into the old side. Mm, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Jesus. Was it, were it not for where he's at right now, 
He would have gone on foot loose and fancy free doing his thing. But when you're at the bottom, you ain't got nowhere else to go. Come on. Amen. Come on. God said he ain't got nowhere else to go. I don't know how many appeals he got. I don't know what his sentence is. I don't know what he did. I don't need to know. But I do know that God is going to use this circumstance. He's going to use this situation to get him to where he needs to be in the kingdom of God. Father, hear this cry. Hear this cry tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, go to where that young man is, God. Lord, go to where he is and give him a visitation in this midnight hour. God, in the midnight hour, Lord, let him sing a praise unto you. Lord, let him sing and let him worship you, God. Lord, let him praise you, Father God. And in the midnight hour, Lord, we speak the prison doors, the emotional prison doors that he's been in, the prison doors that have kept Lord, we speak that they be broken, 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 and destroyed off of his life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He had to be severed from the roots. Because as long as he was connected to the roots, you could keep him covered. But he had to be severed from those roots yeah. so that he would be able to train the child the way he should go, where he's only won't depart from it. He'll mess up and he'll get off the track. But when he gets in trouble, he's going to know God calling him. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Raise up your head. Amen. Lord. You don't have to hang your head low. You don't have to hang your head down. Amen. Rejoice in the fact that he's coming to God. Amen. Rejoice in that. Amen. Amen. Oh, somebody give the Lord praise to you. this because this, is, this has been a long time coming. You've been a long time in the making. You've had much success for a young lady. You've, you've had a lot of experiences that have, have been, you've had a lot of good experiences. But your current situation is that you're so in love with Jesus that it seems as though you don't have a whole lot in your immediate world because you're all about him. Nothing else really matters. There are some dreams and some goals that you had as a young girl that have not yet come to pass. Uh, some of those uh, concerning, uh, uh, concerning your future. And some of them have manifested, but there are some things that have been put on the back burner. And right now, you're in a position that you really don't care. It matters, but you don't care because you're so in love with him. You're so in love with him. He's the only thing that matters. I see in you all you want is to be close to the king. All you want is to get up in daddy's lap and let daddy hold you. And let daddy wipe away your tears. And let daddy open up the doors that no man can close. And let daddy, oh hallelujah, get up in daddy's lap and let daddy love on you. And I'm going to tell you something. And I'm not calling our heavenly father daddy. Some people do that. I personally don't. But I'm going to tell you something. Amen. You come to this place that he is so valuable to you because you know where you could be. You know that success could have taken you on a whole nother road. Nashville could have grabbed you up. Come on. Hillsong could have grabbed you up, but you know. That because you chose to go the ways of God, God's got something big in store for you. Yeah. Yes. God's got something big in store for you. And I'm going to tell you something. Your, your, your song, that's only the beginning. You are, you're, that's, that's just a crack in the doorway. Come on. That's just a crack in the doorway. Because young lady, I'm going to tell you something. And I know you know this, but I just need to verify it to you. You're going somewhere. Amen. 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 You, you may not be like under the shadow of mom and dad. 
Amen. I know that's comfort. Amen. But you may not be under that shadowing, but know this, that he's going to keep you shadowed. And he'll cover you with his feathers. And he'll put the fletching on your ministry. And you'll be guided right to where you need to go. And he'll put your character and your integrity on the end of that ministry. So that when you hit that target, it's going to penetrate. And there's going to be many that are going to come to the kingdom of God. Because your availability in the quiver. Yes, yes, yes. When God takes that shot with you. Amen. He's going to hit his target. Yes, he is. He's going to hit his target. I love you, baby. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Can I just obey God tonight? Oh. Raise your hand up there, young lady. Can I minister to you? Yes, ma'am. Have I ever seen you before? You've been in a... In a um, I'm going to say a tornado, storm all around you, dark clouds all around you. In that tornado, it looks like everything is, uh, uh, it is it's just flying everywhere. It's just, there's, there's nothing that is, um, that is dependable in your life. Uh, you have one or two friends that you think you can depend on. Um, that remains to be seen. But there's a couple people that you think you can count on. But I'm going to tell you something, young lady. The one thing you can count on that will never change is God. That's, right. That's the one thing that you can count on. He's the only boat afloat. Amen. The conditions under which you walk into this building tonight God doesn't want you to leave that way. He wants you to leave free. He wants you to, he wants you to be happy. You've looked here, you look there, you've looked over there, you've looked behind you, you've looked ahead of you, and you're trying to find that place of happiness. You're trying to find that joy unspeakable. You're trying to find that, that place that you can feel comfort, that place that you can feel protected. And you have anything but all of the above. While you would not appear to be a fearful woman, you're fearful. <coughs> you're afraid. And God wants to take that fear from you and let you live in the peace of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. I see God in, in this storm, in this hurricane, this tornado that you've been in. God said he's going to move you from the outer perimeters into the eye into the eye of the storm. Because if you're in the eye of the storm, it can storm all around you, but in the eye, you'll have peace. So he's moving you from the outer perimeters into the eye, and you're going to be protected in the eye of that storm. Hallelujah. Everything around you is falling apart, my friend. There is nothing stable in your life. Nothing in your life. Is stable right now. But God wants to turn that around for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. You've been through storms. You've been through the fire. You've been through the flood. And now you're in the tornado. But God is going to bring you out on the other side. When he brings you out on the other side, you're going to find out that the sun's shining on the other side. Amen. But let me tell you one more thing, sister. God said he's going to give you a reason to want to get up and live. Yes. Yes. All those thoughts about taking your own life, all those thoughts about hurting yourself, all those thoughts about not having any value, all of those thoughts about being unwanted or undesired, God said to tell you right now, and that he wants you, and he desires you, hallelujah, and he wants you to know that life is worth living, and when you get up in the morning, he's going to give you a whole brand new outlook on life, yes. if you can receive it, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. hallelujah. Amen. hallelujah. Raise your hand, sis. God's going home with you tonight. Well, he goes home with you every night and it's a good thing. Amen. 
But I hear the Lord say that he's going home with you tonight, and it's going to be a special presence in your house, the place that you live. There's going to be a special presence of the Lord that's going to be in your home tonight. Amen. And God said he's going to take the chaos and the and the, uh, the, the all the confusion and stuff. She, she had confusion in her house, too. But, but God said he's going to take the chaos and the confusion out of your house, and he's going to put peace there where it was. Yeah. There's some things that you've got to change. Some things you gotta change. You see, if things are if things are are are, are not going good at, at your present address, then you gotta change locations. You know what I mean? You gotta change locations. Yes. So when everything is all messed up in the location where you are, don't let that govern where you're going. Right. Amen. Right. Yeah. Because you still got the fletching on you. You got the fletching that is is your direction. And God said, if you let Him, He will order. Your steps, and he will direct you in the place that he wants to take you. Amen. But you gotta be sensitive to a spirit. You understand that? Yeah. Amen. Be sensitive to the spirit of God. God says he's gonna sharpen your hearing so that you hear. Right now, what you're hearing is a whole bunch of mess. You hear a whole bunch of stuff over here, and a whole bunch of stuff over there. Somebody behind you talking, and somebody ahead of you talking, and ran, ran, ran. And you see people getting their claws out and me and all that kind of stuff going on. Amen. And it's causing you to not have the sensitivity to the voice of God. Is that correct? Amen. The Lord said to tell you that he's going to help you to be able to block out all of that. All of that cat fighting stuff going on. Amen. And he's going to help you hear the voice of God. He's healing your ears tonight to hear what thus saith the Lord. Not what everybody else has got to say, but he's healing your ears to hear what he's got to say about you and to you. Come on. Somebody praise him tonight. Yeah. Young man, I'm going to call you Asa. I don't know what your name is, but I'm going to call you Asa. I'm going to tell you why. Asa means physician. Asa took the place of, um, whose place did he take? To become the king over Judah. He was the son of, of a woman named Maica. Maica set up idols, and she was not the best woman. And so when Asa became king, he even put his own mother out because he was the king over Judah, which was the king of peace. So he had, he had, to, he had to disconnect from his own mother because I think I'm telling the story right. She set up, is that right, Pastor, Pastor Craig? Amen. Uh, we'll look it up. It's in First Kings, I think. And, and so Asa had to disconnect from his own mother because she did not have the same visions that he had to take care of the kingdom. God said, Asa, amen, that he is going to make you a ruler in his kingdom. He's going to cause you, amen, to over even, oh, hallelujah, he's going to cause you to rise up to the situation and not back down, no matter who's coming against you, no matter who is talking about it, no matter who is saying you can't do that, no matter who's telling you that it won't work, God is going to cause you, young man, and I know you can't be very old, but he's going to cause you to rise to the circumstances and whatever or whomever you have to disconnect from. God said, go ahead and disconnect because he's got you covered. Position. Amen. You go to public school? Uh -huh. How was school yesterday? Awful. It was okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. You got some buddies that are not your buddies. Sorry. You got some buddies that intend to be like your friend. And all the time, they're plotting against you, and they're bullying you, and they're shutting you around, and they're making fun of you, and they're talking about you, and they're pushing you until sometimes it feels like you don't even want to go back. But God said, King Asa, rise. Rise and rule over that little kingdom. Let the God in you rise up. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to say anything. All you got to do is look like God. All you got to do is walk like God, yes. smell like God. Yes. Amen. Sooner or later, they're going to want some of what you got. Come on, man. They're going to want some of what you got. So just keep on living it. Keep on living it, son. Keep on walking it and keep on talking That's it. That's right. Because God's got you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Isn't God so good? Yes. 